I want to ask you a question. What constitutes a leader? What constitutes a leader? What? One who leads. <laughs> constitute. What's a, what's a leader like? Is that good? <laughs> yes, sir. What? Someone that is a good example of what you're about to do. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Okay. Example. example. Yes. Someone who is able to get others to follow Okay. Someone who has a plan. Someone who has a plan. Get others to follow you. Yeah, you ain't much of a leader if you don't have followers. <laughs> okay. And responsibility. Okay, I'm going to ask you a question. Have you ever had to follow a good leader? Have you ever had someone that you really? How many of you have had a the, the experience of following a really good leader? Yeah. Yeah. It was, it was wonderful. It was wonderful. Wasn't it? Yeah. How many of you have ever had the experience of following a bad leader? Oh, about the same number of hands, about the same number of hands. I got to tell you guys, there, <laughs> there is a drastic difference between those two, isn't there? There's a draft. And, 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 and we're not talking about what you have to do. We're talking about the way you have to do it. Yes. You know, and, and someone who's a bad leader, you just don't, you just don't trust them. You just don't, you just don't want to have anything to do with them, you know? So, by the way, Jeff is throwing something away. Say, hi, Jeff. Hi, Jeff. And say, you did a great job in the morning service. For those of you that weren't there, he plays a trombone, played a trombone thing. You aren't doing that in the second service, are you? Oh, too bad. <laughs> You don't think so? You might. <laughs> okay. Oh, wow. Wow. Okay. I bet. So y'all have to watch the live stream later and then send me your critiques. Yeah, you got it. You got it. <laughs> but Jeff did a beautiful job with a trombone solo. Anyway, we're talking today about leadership. We're talking today about leadership. Godly leadership. However, in the process of talking about godly leadership, we're going to be looking at some passages of scripture that Paul wrote to Tim Timothy. Okay, we're going to be looking at some things that Paul wrote to Timothy, but we're also going to be looking at the end. You know how we always do this thing? How then, how shall then you then live? How shall we then live? Um, I'm going to let you decide. What are we supposed to do with what we learned today? We are in. Second Timothy chapters one and two, second Timothy chapters one and two, and the title is godly leadership. What's the point? Godly leaders live unashamed of the gospel. Number two, godly leaders guard the gospel through sound teaching. And number three, godly leaders find strength in the grace of Jesus. Now about, uh, I don't know whether it was three or four weeks ago, I put this up on the board. And it's difficult to see, even with the lights off, so I'm not going to try to turn the lights off. But this was Paul's first missionary journey. We find it in Acts 13 and 14. I want you to notice where it goes to, if you can. It goes to a little place called Lystra. Okay? A little place right in the middle of the map called Lystra. Now, when you, when you get there, when you get there in Acts, they actually run into some trouble. They run into some trouble. They go on to Derby, and then they come back through Lystra and Iconium, and, and they are ministering, even though they get in trouble there. Okay? Now, in Lystra, in Lystra, it is very possible that Paul met Timothy there because he was greatly involved with the people of the church, and Timothy's people were there in Lystra. Okay? People's, Tim people's yeah. Timothy's people were there. So this is Acts 13 and 14. I want you to notice the Acts 15, 36 to 18, 22. This is Paul's second missionary journey. And it went like this. They started off at Antioch and they went through Cilicia. They went through Cilicia. They went over to Derby from Cilicia, and on the, on the way, they're, they're stopping at all these churches and encouraging, encouraging people all along the way. 
And then finally, they end up at Lystra. They end up at Lystra again. Lystra keeps coming up, doesn't it? It's in Lystra that we see Paul officially meet Timothy. Like I said, I'm of the opinion that he knew him before. Okay, it describes him as describes his character as somebody who had proven himself already. Well, if Paul is in Lystra with the church and there's a guy who has already proven himself just a short time before. Uh, you understand what I'm saying? The odds are he probably met Timothy then. But the official meeting is in Acts 16 and just a little bit more background. Second Timothy was written by Paul while he was in prison. Okay. Shortly before Paul's death, he wrote this letter to, to Timothy, and it was to encourage him. Paul had left Timothy before when he went to Macedonia and encouraged him to encourage the people that he was with. We believe that was at Ephesus, and we believe that now Timothy is in Ephesus. And there's several things that kind of link that together. Do you remember some people named Priscilla and Aquila, tent makers, right? Paul worked with them. Well, they, they at this time were in Ephesus. And in the letter, he says to greet them, to say howdy. Well, he, he wouldn't say howdy, you know, say howdy to somebody that wasn't around, right? I mean, that makes sense. So we're thinking he's in Ephesus. Okay. One more thing. The relationship of Paul and Timothy was much like a father-son. Paul saw himself as not just Timothy's teacher, not just as a mentor. He was those things, but as a father who loved him very dearly. He even refers to him as my son. So let's go ahead and look at the scripture. Go to 2 Timothy 1, verses 8 through 12. 2 Timothy 1, verses 8 through 12. So do not be ashamed to testify about our Lord or ashamed of me, his prisoner. But join with me in suffering for the gospel by the power of God, who, who, who has, by the power of God, saved us and called us to a holy life, not because of anything we have done, but because of his own purpose and grace. This grace was given to us in Christ Jesus before the beginning of time, but it has now been revealed through the appearing of our Savior, Christ Jesus, who has destroyed death and has brought life and immor immortality to the light, to, to light <laughs> through the gospel. And of this gospel, I was appointed a herald and an apostle and a teacher, and that is why I'm suffering as I am. Yet I'm not ashamed because I know whom I have believed and am convinced that he is able to guard that which I have entrusted him for that day. Okay? First thing, I want you to be aware of what the word ashamed means in the Greek. It means ashamed. <laughs> but I want to give just a little nuance to it because it comes from a root word that means disgraced. And when you read this, you, re you realize that Paul is saying, I know I'm in prison. I know I'm in prison. I know that there's some people who are talking bad about me because I'm in prison. I don't want you to be ashamed of me. I don't want you to be disgraced by me. Now, Paul is in prison, right? Let me ask you a question. Suppose word got to you and it would if this were to happen, suppose word got to you that Ross was in prison. <coughs> Wouldn't you though? <laughs> what would you think? What would be the first? I know. And I would go see him too. But what would you think? What would you? I mean, there must be a mistake. There must be a mistake. There must be a mistake. Okay. What else? You want to know why you're going to want to know what happened, what the, what the circumstances were. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Right. Right. 
Okay. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yes. And yes. Now, the thing is, guys, if he's in prison, we know Ross, don't we? Yeah. We know him so well. Right. I mean, most of us do. Oh, I'm, well, either one, either. Yeah, I said in prison because Paul was in prison. But um, Ross is the pastor. He is our pastor for Pete's sake. And so we are going to not be alarmed. Paul was in prison not for preaching the gospel, although he did. He was in prison for causing trouble. Do you understand? He was upsetting the apple cart, so to speak. I mean, that's why he was in prison. Now, if Ross is in prison, we're going to want to know why. We're, we're not going to think the worst automatically, are we? No. For the most part, we're not going to think that. We may be, we're wondering why. What happened? What did he do? What, ha- what, what brought him to this point? You know? Um, and, and we are going to want to know, in prison or in jail? Is he just been arrested or is this, you know, something that he's been convicted of or whatever? If we just heard about it, he would probably be in jail, right? However, what does Brenham think about that? Well, not just Brenham. You're talking about, oh, the pastor at a major church just got put in prison. Uh-huh. Actually, it's going to build up. You think? You think? <laughs> yes, sir. Oh, yeah, 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 right, right, so I'm, I'm kind of thinking that if that were the, if that were the case, if, if he was in prison, that uh, there might be some uproar, and what you mentioned is where my example came from. When it started coming down through the media that Catholic priests had been accused of pedophilia. Well, the conundrum was it wasn't because they were charged. They promised they weren't charged. Yeah, yeah, that's it. That's it. There was no legal application of the law. Right. Versus the ones. Right. Like some of the uh, other denominations. Hopefully they were. Yes, yes. The Southern Baptist Convention. Yes, that was what I was saying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, 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 now, ta- yeah, but what you're talking about, there were facts. Yes. That- well, there's facts with the Southern Baptist Convention, too. Now, listen, guys, listen. The problem is when this kind of stuff happens, the church is affected. It becomes defaced. Yes. It, it becomes defaced. It becomes disgraced. And a lot of people, a lot of people, I was visiting with one of my friends this week who has a Catholic background. And he actually brought up this subject when he was railing on the Catholic church, which he used to be a part of. Okay, he brought it up, and as a as a former Catholic, he's Baptist now, but he, you know, as a former Catholic, the thing is, people, that disgrace goes a long way, and consequently, if someone were to come up to you and you were to say, "Where do you go to church?" First Baptist Church here in Brenham, yeah, is that a Southern Baptist Church? Yeah. So do y'all have any problems with, uh, you know, pastors and, and people in authority taking advantage of women? Yeah. You know. <laughs> yeah and, and it's being dealt with. Yes. Now, guys, do you understand why he's telling him, don't be ashamed of the gospel? Don't be ashamed of the gospel. Don't worry about me. Don't be disgraced by where I am or what's going on. He talks more about that in the letter. But... Wow. Yes. And- wow. 
wow, even wower. Wow. Yeah, and that was in, in San Angelo? How many people how many people live in San Angelo or, or lived? Yeah, yeah. Right. But it was known, wasn't it? Very well known. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Sammy Faye, who? I don't remember that name. <laughs> Jerry Falwell. Yeah. 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 So have you ever had someone you trust let you down? Anybody? Nobody? Okay, good. good. Yeah, you know you have. I mean, there's been times. Have you ever known someone you were embarrassed to admit knowing? I'm, I'm sorry. You know, you're in a conversation and somebody gets to talking and uh, they say, okay. Do you know? And you're going, okay, do I say yes or no? Huh? <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, they're not. They're right. They're right. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> right there. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's junior high. Boy, I'm telling you. Oh, my goodness. Okay. Well, <laughs> to wrap up, to wrap up, has Jesus ever, ever let you down? No, Jesus ain't never let you down, right? Have you ever been embarrassed to admit knowing him? Oh, we're getting somewhere now. There's some times when you might have felt something. I'm hoping that you could say no to this. Okay, but. There's some times when you're just not sure. Now, have you ever, have you ever been in, embarrassed to admit to knowing Jesus to Jesus? No, no, no problem. And for the most part, I, I can say, I don't mind mentioning the name of Jesus. The reason we're kind of hesitant, and I'm not saying all of you. I'm saying if you are hesitant to mention the name Jesus, the reason is because you know what kind of reaction you're going to get. And, and you just don't want to deal with that. But folks, Jesus has never let you hanging in the past, and Jesus ain't never going to leave you hanging in the future. You can have confidence in him. You will not ever, ever, ever be disgraced by him. You do not ever have to worry about being ashamed to know him, to be ashamed of him. Let's go on. Godly leaders, guard the gospel through sound teaching, verses 13 and 14. What you heard from me, keep as the pattern of sound teaching with faith and love in Christ Jesus. Guard the good deposit that was entrusted to you. Guard it with the help of the Holy Spirit who lives in us. What's he talking about? What is sound doctrine or sound teaching? The gospel? Okay. Teaching that's not perverted. Yes. The ways of God. Godly teaching. The ways of God. Anything else? I was expecting someone to say what's in the Bible. But at this point, the Bible was the Old Testament. <laughs> you know, at this point, they had the letters that, you know, like this one, that that are part of our scripture. And by the way, if, if ever you doubt this, I oh, should have looked up the verse for this, but the apostles 
believe that their teaching was on a level with scripture. Do you understand what I'm saying? They believe that. And so when they were teaching, they, they believed that the things that they said, the things that they wrote were on a par. So in a sense, they do have not just the Old Testament and not just what was said, but they have writings at this point. The 13 says right there, you, the words you have heard from me. Right. He's telling you that the words that's, you that's exactly you. right. That's it's exactly right. Yes, yes. And I think that first thing. Yes. And the pattern, the pattern of counseling, so the pattern is in faith and love that are in Christ. Right. In faith and in love. Okay. Because you have to, guys, you have to love Jesus. You have to have faith. And the faith that comes from him that is in you, you have to have that in order to truly understand what sound doctrine is and to impart sound doctrine. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And not just letters, but think, I mean, you know, what they were teaching and what, oh my goodness, it was. Yes, exactly, exactly. You know, you, you got to get circumcised first. Now, a little bit later, Paul is going to kind of negate what he was teaching <laughs> with Timothy. But, <laughs> okay. But, but in the faith and love of Jesus Christ, you have to, you have to, you have to teach sound doctrine. And Paul says, I've made the deposit in you. Now, just like, just like when Jesus, you know, told the parable of the talents. You give him something, you better do something with it. You better do something with it. Let's go on and look at 2 Timothy 2, verses 1 through 7. Then you, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus and the things you have heard from me say in the presence of many witnesses and trust to reliable men who will be qualified to teach others. Endure hardship with us like a good soldier of Christ Jesus. No one serving as a soldier gets involved in civilian affairs. He wants to please his commanding officer. Similarly, if anyone competes as an athlete, he does not receive the victor's crown unless he competes according to the rules. The hardworking farmer should be the first to receive a share of crops. Reflect on what I am saying, for the Lord will give you insight into all of this. Remember Jesus Christ, raised from the dead, descended from David. This is my gospel for which I'm suffering, even to the point of being chained like a criminal. But God's word is not chained. Therefore, I endure everything for the sake of the elect, that they too may obtain the salvation that is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. I know I went on a little bit farther, but yeah. <sighs> this was. Yeah, I can't remember where I'm drawing a blank. Right, and then he he said, "I'm yeah, inciting a riot." But, well, they beat him. Was it at the temple? It was at the temple. Okay. They beat him, and then at some point he's like, "By the way, I'm a Roman." Citizen. He said, "I'm a Roman citizen." I, I get to appeal to I get to appeal to Caesar, and they go, "Oh darn." <laughs> Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> okay. In terms of being uh, with uh, Gentiles, right. bringing them into the court. Right. Yes, yes, thank you. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's what I was looking yeah. Yeah, that big no-no, big no-no. So, do you see what's happening here? I Verses, verses uh, three and... Uh, I mean, uh, one and two of that chapter. Read like an LFW. <laughs> it says down at the bottom, letter of final wishes. When you're doing your will, you can include some things in the will. Okay. There may be some things that you don't necessarily include in a will that you might want to say. For example, you might want to say, 
that urn of your grandmother that's on the mantle, don't ever move it. <laughs> don't dump her out. <laughs> <laughs> or it might say you can get rid of it now <laughs> okay but but do you see what it, do you see what i'm saying you then my son my son be strong in the grace of christ jesus and the things you have heard me say in the presence of many witnesses and trust reliable men who will be be qualified to teach others in other words, let's keep this thing going. Just, I mean, he's in prison. He knows this could very well be the last time. It wouldn't be the first time, but it could be the last time. And in fact, it was the last time. Okay. So he's saying, I want to get my affairs in order. Right. And then let's talk about these analogies. Just glance through them. The soldier, the athlete, and the farmer. Okay. The butcher, the baker, and the candlestick maker. <clears throat> what is said about the soldier? Follows he follows orders. He endures hardship and suffering. What? Hardship. Thank you. What else? Stays apart. Stays, apart, stays above the fray. Wants to please his commander. How does that apply to Christians? Yeah. I mean, think about it. He does the work that he's told to do. Yes, he does. Now, as a Christian, as a Christian, are we supposed to obey the commander? Yes. That's right. That's exactly right. What does it mean to, to be uh, and we use the term above the fray. What does that mean as a Christian? Set apart from the world. Okay. Don't, yeah, don't be what the world thinks you should be. Yeah, stay away from drama. <laughs> That's easier said than done. <laughs> Message, those, are, those of you with teenagers, stay away from drama. Huh? <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> What'd you say? I said, so that your message stays the same, the, the, the main message. Right. Now, what about this stuff about hardship and enduring sufferings and pain and all of that? Well, whoa, 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 whoa. By the way, he says back at the beginning, at the in the first part that we read, he's talking about suffering there too. Yeah, but, but we're Christians. We're not supposed to have hard times, man. We have faith. I just did. <laughs> oh, oh, don't go there. We don't want to know that. We don't want to know that. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, no, no. I'm not going to riddle you that one. I'm not going to argue the point. Y'all know what? Y'all know what we're talking about here. You know, one of the things, one of the things that I have been so impressed about with any military training, and those of you that have been in the military, maybe you can refute me on this, but one of the things that you are taught. I don't want to use the word ignore, but what you do is you focus on your task, and no matter what's going on around you, that's what you do. Is Am I right, John? And in training, they put you through H-E double hockey sticks in order to drill that into you. Paul is saying, just like Jesus said, in this world, you will have trouble. It's coming. Whether you want it or not, it's coming. Whether you like it or not, it's coming. You will have trouble. Now, unfortunately, or maybe fortunately, depending on your viewpoint, here in America, our troubles are few and far between. I mean, let's, let's be real. Let's be real. John likes to talk about first world problems. We have first world problems. 
and we have first world Christian problems as well. What? The Wi Fi went down. Man, that's a problem. I'm being persecuted. I'm being persecuted because Facebook won't allow me to post something about Jesus. Yeah, that's the kind of cries of persecution we hear today. When the fact is, you go to your neighbor and talk about Jesus all you want. You go to work and talk about Jesus all you want. Your boss can even tell you, don't talk about Jesus anymore. And you can say, just as the apostles did, whether it's right or wrong to talk about Jesus, we're going to talk about Jesus. I'm sorry, folks. We are not persecuted uh, as it says in Hebrews, to the point of shedding of blood. We're not. We're not. Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. And I hope it doesn't come. I don't really want to go through that. But not yet. Not yet. So these things that happen to us that we like to call persecution, we need to laugh and enjoy the fact, just as the disciples did, they enjoyed, they found joy in the fact that they were being persecuted for the sake of Christ. They laughed and threw a party over it. They didn't go, oh, oh, by the way, I need to set the record straight. And I've got time. A couple of weeks ago, I told you that Pam was in Facebook jail. I never told you why. I never told you why Facebook, she was in Facebook jail. On the day of her birthday, on the day of her birthday, she was responding to all of the birthday messages that she got personally. She read each one and responded personally. Okay. Hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of birthday greetings. If you say, if you say happy birthday to me on my birthday on Facebook, if you get a check, count yourself blessed. <laughs> if you get a thumbs up, that's a, but she was responding. Well, one of our friends from Beeville wrote to her and said, if anyone makes fun of you for your, for, for your old age, just throw your false teeth at them and smack them with your cane. <laughs> y'all get it. It's a joke, right? Now, she responded by saying, and y'all know that Pam has mobility issues. She has a mobility scooter, right? She responded by saying, it would be much more efficient for me to run them over with my scooter. <laughs> she went to Facebook jail for saying, I would run them over. Are you with me? Yeah. <laughs> Get this. It got worse. It got worse. She just got a slap on the wrist and, you know, 30 days of probation or something. I don't know what it was. Anyway, someone asked her, what did you get... Facebook. So she took a snapshot of that, of that comment and sent it to them. Well, she got put in Facebook real jail for 30 days and was not able to post. And, and then they kind of, kind of reneged a little bit and said, but your posts are going to be at the bottom of everything. Isn't that just tacky? Isn't that just child? Isn't that junior high? I'm going to put your post at the bottom. <laughs> so anyway, my dearly beloved Pam got, saw, found the wrath of Facebook. And now you understand. The thing is, guys, we are going to face troubles and we will face, uh, you know, persecution of some sort. And we need to be happy about it. We need to find joy. Consider it all joy, James says, when you run into various trials and temptations. Consider it all joy. How about the athlete? What's his story? He ain't going for no participation trophy. What's he going for? He's going to win the prize. Boy, howdy. And he's going to follow the rules doing this. <laughs> he's going to follow the rules doing this. Okay. What does that mean for a Christian? 
Can't cheat. Right. You got to run the race. What else? Can't get it by good deeds. You've got to run the race, but it's all in your heart and where you are. Listen, listen. What, what he's saying is you've got to run it to win it. And in order to run it to win it, it has to be here. It's got to be here. It's got to be here. If it ain't here, you ain't running no race. You're doing it for your glory? No. No. It's for God. It's for God. How about the farmer? Government imposed socialism is not right. Why would you say that? <laughs> That's what you read. <laughs> Okay. It's against socialism? Oh. Yes. 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 And he can get the first or he can get the last, but that should be his. If he's the one who's okay. done it, it's whether it's but how he responds. Okay. Do not muzzle the ox while he's treading the grain. Do not muzzle the ox while he's treading the grain. I agree. The oxen are slow, but the earth is patient. That's just an old Chinese proverb. I don't know where that came from. <laughs> That's not from the Bible. But some of you are going, what well, was it? Okay. Check it out. Check it out. What does that mean for the Christian? What he says about the farmer. What does that mean for the Christian? Man should be patient because God is patient. Okay. Okay. Yes, that's true. That's true. Are we going to receive a reward? Scripture says that there will be rewards, okay? Not in this world, not in this world, no. I mean, we, we get some rewards, we get some rewards, but not the reward, not the eternal reward. What about peace? Yeah, well, we do. Now, if you're going to be faithful like a farmer is faithful, um, have any of you ever been farmers? Not, my, not my, my backyard. Daddy, I'm not, 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 no, 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 no. Yeah, that's your daddy. That's not you. You've worked on a farm. Yeah, I've worked on a ranch too, you know. But a farmer, a farmer has a totally different mindset to the way the world works. Okay. First off, it's totally trusting God. Now I'm talking about in the old days. Today, if you fly over West Texas, you see round circles of green, <laughs> you know, but in the old days, it was a total trust thing. You trusted God for rain. You trusted God for sunshine. You trusted God in everything. Yes, exactly. Exactly. That's right. That's exactly right. And not only that, you were also diligent. You were diligent to faithfully execute everything that you needed to do to make sure that things happen. As Christians, we need to totally trust God. We need to be faithful to execute everything that God tells us to do. That's personally and in the world. That's not just here. That's not just here in this classroom. That means when you're there, when you're there, you need to be trusting God fully for everything that happens. You need to be enjoying the time spent with God's good earth, you know, and, and farmers knew, farmers knew about the earth. Farmers in the old days, they, they knew, they knew their perspective was totally different. But not only that, they knew that when that grain came up, where it came from, every good and perfect gift is from the father of lights.